Welcome back friends, it's another good time, I have uh, received the different comments from my students uh, regarding classification topic and some of them they've asked me for the notes, some of them for the sessions. I know classification is one among the longest topic. Actually, it's not principle of classification, but uh, it is the comparative studies of groups of living organisms, which is the longest one. And it has different categories of questions, which we need to discuss them. For this time, we'll just discuss about the principles of classification. And after finishing the principles of classification, we will go into discussing the comparative uh, studies of different groups of living organisms. For sitting in this session, I am Dr. Mlelwa. And let's go together with me. I hope you will enjoy this topic. In the first part of this topic, we are discussing about the history of classification. For every topic which I am teaching, I always need you to know the history first because history is very important. History will enable you to understand different concepts and their origin. Where did they come from? That will help you to stick some of the concepts in your head. And when they will stick, they will stick forever. Now, I think this is not a time to talk a lot of stories. Let's delve into the history of classification. Now this is chapter 3 in my book. Chapter 1 is cytology. Chapter 2 is biochemistry. And chapter 3 is the principles of classification. So you are saying... The universe contains different kinds of organisms, we all know. And from my, the, these organisms, they are from microorganisms which cannot be seen by our naked eyes to microorganisms which are simple and complex ones. So there is a need to group these organisms in a way that will enable us to understand them easily. So, lazima to find effort Zakweza ku group our living organisms in a way that will enable to understand them easily. Now since the down of civilization, to kisema down of civilization we mean since the existence of human being. You know according to your faith. <laughs> anyway, like in some of you Nazam Kasema in a manner, Adam will to fight to classify living organism. Like in what we are saying, Nikomba, since the dawn of civilization, since the existence of life, since the existence of life, there have been many attempts to classify living organisms. Probably Adam did not fight to classify living organisms, but he might be fighting for one way or another. So it was done inst instinctively, not using criteria that were scientific, but born out of a need to use organisms for our own use for food, shelter, clothing, and etc. But you know, the classification of organisms before coming into scientific basis, it requires a number of E wanaifanya kwa ajili yao wenyewe let's say classification inafanywa e, kwa kuna wanyama wengine ni wa chakula wengine wanafaa kwa ngozi wengine wanafaa kwa maziwa wanafaa kwa nyama wengine wanafaa kwa mayai you see yani it was not scientific in such but it was a classifying organisms according to how we use them that we have uh, we have plants we use them for food we have animals, we use them for meat. We have this, we use them for this. No, no. So all of these, they are different categorization of the ways by which animals they are classified. 
But in the scientific basis, the earlier scientist to classify animals was Aristotle. Now I remember one among the things which I am remembering in my advanced studies that uh, when my, my advanced biology teacher taught about, about classification, he mentioned much about Aristotle. And by the way, how he was pronouncing the word Aristotle, we finally called him Aristotle. So don't start calling me Aristotle. I don't. I have my my own name. <laughs> my name is Doctor Melo. So Aristotle was the earliest, earliest to attempt a more scientific basis for classification. He lived uh, many years before Christ. So Alish Miakaflan, uh, the fourth century Greek philosopher. Uyu alikuwa ni mwana filosofia pamoja na watu kama Hippocrates. Actually, he is your picture ya Aristotle ni sana mtu ambazo zikuja kuchongwa baadaye kwa sababu picha zao hazikuweza kupatikana. Walishi muda mrefu sana akina Aristotle, Hippocrates, walishi muda mrefu. Hii sio picha yake lakini ni sana yake tu. If you go to Google and you search for Aristotle, you get this uh, irrigate this sanam so um, he divided organisms into two main groups namely the plants and the animals so he used the simple morphological characteristics to classify plants into trees shrubs and herbs kwa wale classified uh, uh, plants kwenda kwenye trees yani miti mikubwa shrubs miti midogo na herbs yani herbaceous plants zile ndogo ndogo kabisa ambazo they don't have wood stem unaona he also divided the animals into two groups those which are delayed by the cell and those which did not nona his system was used in 1600 yani ilikuwa inatumika hadi miaka 1600 people who wrote about animals and plant used the either used their common names in various languages or adopted more or less standardized description ko watu walikuwa wanaandika vitu mbalimbali regarding the plants and animals ni either walitumia their common names au walitumia mfumo wa Aristotle. Aristotle classify nini? Plants and animals. Plants are classified into trees, shrubs and herbs. Animals those who have been led by cell and those who lack like the led by cell. The second scientist to classify animals ni Carlos Linnaeus. Carlos Linnaeus or Carl von Linnaeus mwaka mmoja mia saba na saba aliishi hadi mwaka mia saba sabina nane was the 18th century Sweden botanist and physician he classified plants and animals according to the similarities in form and he divided living things into two main kingdoms namely plantae and the animal kingdom Aristotle didn't understood even about the kingdoms the idea about the kingdoms started with Carlos Linnaeus and he named the plants and animals in Latin or used the latinized names in his books kwa katika vitabu vyake aliweka majina scientific names a plants and the animals unaona kwa hiyo kitabu cha species plantalum cha mwaka 1753 species plantalum hiyo ni 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 kifalan, ni kifalan sambachi kina maana ya species plantalum maana yake ni species of plants kwa aliweka scientific names of plants lakini pia kuna kitabu kingine ambacho ni e, sistema naturae sistema naturae cha mwaka mmoja mia saba msena nane ambacho kilikuwa kinaelezea kuhusu system of nature kina different scientific name pia nacho unaona so hii ndio picha ya bwana Karl Linnaeus you can also uh, go to deep further into the history of these people what they did the experiment about these books but they are out of scope of our studies so no hata hii history nimekuwekea tu ili uweze kujua we just mention all the important people in the history of classification we can't mention them actually because they are many so the two kingdom classification system divide uh, devised by Linus devised that means ilikuwa imetengenezwa yani devised is like 
but it's like designed but designing it's not an intensive process like device so device the manake editing kitu kitengenezo kwa makini a long process taking many days so the two kingdom classification system devised by Linus is not used today as scientists discovered more and more about different organisms they expanded the system to include many more kingdoms and grouping however one of the Linus more enduring system was the system of naming organism called binomial nomenclature kwa hiyo moja kati ya kitu ambacho Carl Linus alifaulu ni ku create binomial nomenclature to name organisms by two greek words we will learn more about the binomial nomenclature in another section but linus is known as the father of modern anatomy <laughs> very sorry is known as the father of modern taxonomy father of modern taxonomy modern taxonomy father ni carlos linus this system does not distinguish between the eukaryotes and the prokaryotes system ya a linus i can distinguish between eukaryote and prokaryote unicellular and multicellular organism and photosynthetic green algae and non photosynthetic fungi organism ko ilikuwa itofautish prokaryote na eukaryote unicellular and multicellular photosynthetic and non photosynthetic they were not uh, distinguished in this uh, system of um, plants and animals classification of organisms into plants and animals was easily done and it was easier to understand in spite a large number of organisms did not fall into either category large number of organisms did not come as in any category hence the two kingdom classification used for long time was found inadequate a need was also felt for including besides gross morphology other than characteristics like cell structure nature of war mode of nutrition habitat methods of reproduction evolution and relationship etc ko kulikona kana kuna uhitaji wa kuongeza vitu kama hivi you see here the diagram which show the two kingdom classification system by carl linus uh, all living uh, being they can be classified into the kingdom plantae and the kingdom animalia kingdom plantae uh, cell wall is present feature cell wall is present and then they locomotion is absent they can't locomote mode of nutrition they do not eat they produce their own food response to external stimuli is absent except for lower plants contractile system is absent except the atoms ambao hata walio tajwa hapa our chlamydomas our walio tajwa hapa ni bacteria kinda kinda mydomas hawa ni bacteria sio sio plants lakini uh, tukija kwa kingdom animalia um, cell wall is absent locomotion is present mode of nutrition they eat response to stimuli is present and the contractile system is present unaona kwa hiyo hiyo ni kwa difference kati ya plants and animal na ka classify kuna kwa group mbili so classification system for living organism have hence undergone several changes over time though plants and animal kingdom have been a constant under all different system ko plants and animal kingdom zimbakia lakini zimeongezwa kingdom nyingine the understanding of what groups or organisms can be included in these kingdoms have been changing the number and the nature of other kingdom have also been understood differently by different scientists over time now we have uh, another scientist robert hardging witeka robert hardging witeka devised the five kingdom system in 1963 huyu ndo aliyeweka five kingdom system he recognized that fungi belong to their own kingdom the kingdom defined by him were named monella monella then protista fungi planta and animalia the main criteria for classification used by him include cell structure thorough organization mode of nutrition reproduction and phylogenetic relationship so however 
Even today, the five kingdom system is under dispute. It is the nature of science that as more discovery came to light, theories will continue to be improved upon and revealed. But nowadays, we are using the five uh, kingdom classification system. We can see these five kingdoms from Monella, Prokaryotes, then we have fungi, animals, and the plantae. This diagram is like they are arranging the evolutionary trends. According to evolution, it is believed that the Monella they existed first. Then after the Monella, they existed the a protectist. After that, we had the fungi, the animals, and the plants. And here we have the different characteristics. For example, the Monella, they are a prokaryotic unicellular. Prokaryotic unicellular. Uh, they can either absorb food or they can put it in the size sometimes. They are motile or non-mobile. They can be either motile or non-motile. And they are asexual in reproduction. Here you can see the eukaryotic, unicellular, multicellular. They absorb, ingest, or photosynthesize, depending on the different categories of the protoctist. Uh, reproduction is sexual and asexual. All of them they can be, uh, they can, they can undergo. Also in the fungi we have different uh, features. Confano the eukaryotic, multicellular, absorb absorb food that means they can't they can't put their own food they are non-motile and they are sexual eukaryotic matricellular they ingest food motile they are sexual there is a difference between absorb food and ingest katika ku ingest maraka na internal digestion katika ku absorb maraka external digestion we shall see this in studying different kingdoms Tutaona the ability of different animals, some of them they ingest, some of them they, they digest food inside their bodies. Uh, katika plants, they are eukaryotic, matricellular, for the size, non-motile, and they are sexual. Different categories of these organisms, we discuss them later as we are continuing with this topic. Now, we share the meaning of classification, the aims of classification, our different terminologies, and if time will allow us, we will move to the classification systems. Thank you, and later we should assist others.